Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Affantage Experiments. I just wanted to say before the episode starts that the sound quality in this episode isn't the best. There's a bit of a scratching in the background. It tends to get better towards the end of the episode, but uh, I, I can't re-record and remember everything I said. My podcast is completely unscripted. I just ramble. And so I know that if I re-record, I'm going to miss some of the golden nuggets that are sprinkled throughout this episode. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to post and hopefully it's not too annoying for everyone. I promise I'll do better in the future. Um, and if anybody has a recommendation for a portable mic, because I like to walk around my island or like go through the forest and walk, if anyone has a great recommendation for that, let me know. And also one that's not expensive because I have ADHD and I lose every single headphone that I ever have. So, yeah, let me know, please. Uh, anyways, without further ado, adieu, adieu, without further adieu, adieu. It's one of those weird words that I don't actually know what it means. What's adieu mean? Without further adieu. Actually, Google that. I don't know what it means. Here's the episode. Hello. Welcome to Aphantasia Experiments. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time, um, there's no order to any of these episodes. I'm a rambler. Sometimes I talk about Aphantasia, sometimes I don't. In this episode, I feel like I don't touch on it much. Um, but I wanted to let everyone know, I never like tell you about my other channels or anything else I'm doing, so I'm gonna just start there. One. I have a YouTube channel and I've been trying to upload a lot more meditations because I think that doing meditation when you have aphantasia, it's usually like so many meditations out there are geared towards like visualizing. And um, I'm trying to like do specific meditations solely for people with aphantasia to help help you either develop your visualization and like I'm putting these out there for myself too. I use them regularly. Um, or to um, connect to your higher self, connect to your soul without needing to like picture a beach, right? Like, so I'm trying to make these YouTube meditations specifically for people with aphantasia or, or for people trying to develop their intuition too, because that's a really big passion of mine. Um, so recent YouTube ones that I just uploaded in the last like month are I did a mirror meditation. So you're staring at yourself in the mirror. A lot of things happen with visual distortion when you just stare at yourself. But something that happens when you stare into your eyes for long enough, you'll start. You might start seeing like an aura around you. You might start having your face like sag, whatever. A lot of different things happen. And I find that it's like an interesting. It's interesting because of our aphantasia, because we're not used to like visual distortion. We're not used to imagining things. So when you start, your face starts looking like an older person's, it's like, it's almost like you're imagining that you're old, but you're not. It's just like something happens when you stare into your eyes for a long time. I don't know why that is, by the way. What, what is that? Um, anyways, I call this meditation like an inner soul meditation. It, you, it guides you through like connecting to yourself, asking questions to yourself. It's on there. Um, it's mirror meditation. It's only 10 minutes. It's a good thing to do. You could do it daily. Just like look into your eyes every day. You don't have to use my meditation, but it's a good starting off point to, you know, develop a relationship with yourself again. How often do you look in your eyes? Ask yourself that. Um, another meditation I recently added was a image streaming meditation. So in this meditation, you're asked to close your eyes and describe what you see, what you feel, whatever. I know as a person with aphantasia, you're seeing your eyelids. I get it. But describe your eyelids. If it's more brown in one area, if it's darker, if you see phosphines because you had light in your eyes, whatever it is, you need to describe that. Anyways, this meditation is another quick one, but it walks you through how to do image streaming. Uh, if you have aphantasia and you're like, you've probably come across stuff about image streaming. And if you haven't, Google it. There's a really good article by a photographer who talks about image streaming. Um, he explains it really well. 
so this meditation just kind of walks you through and I wanted it for myself. So I put it out there for me to use, but I figure, hey, why not let you guys know about it too, right? Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I have a lot of like mantra meditations to connect to your third eye, uh, to connect to your visualization skills, like a lot of stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Anyways, check out my YouTube channel. There's meditations on there. It's not just my podcast. And with that being said, I'm going to start talking about other stuff. Oh, I also have a TikTok channel. Sorry, I'm getting water. I know. I should be sitting in a studio, but because of my ADHD brain, I like to walk and talk, and I walk around my island sometimes, and it's the perfect place to podcast, and it just, just works for me, so it is what it is. Okay, so I wanted to talk about orbits. I've been thinking a lot about this lately. It's come up for me many times. It's like this weird thing that happens where certain people keep showing up in your life or people have similar experiences to you, but different timelines. So I'm going to give an example of both. So you understand, I think I'm going to write that down. Example of both, because I'm going to forget that I said both. Okay, so an example of someone continuously showing up. It's like someone you went to high school with, uh, you see at the bar, you know, in your twenties. Okay. That's normal. They came home from university. You're going to see the same person. Uh, you're 28. You see them at a wedding show. Okay. Fine. You know, you're both getting married at the same time. Blah, blah, blah. Then you see them at the baby show a couple years later. Then you see them at Costco and then you see them, And yes, you're doing similar things in your lives, but there's so a lot of other people. Why are you running into that one person over and over again? It's part of this soul orbit thing. Okay, I have like so many people like this that I run into all the time. And it's it's so random the times we run into each other, it feels like that it it's like it's so noticeable that I can't like not think about it and not think that it means something. Okay, so there's that part of it. One. The other part is when you meet someone. This just happened to me. Okay, you meet someone and you realize that you've had a similar journey, so similar that you're, you know that your, your lives have crossed paths in multiple ways and you know multiple, like a bunch of the same people and you're like, how do we not know each other? This is so weird. That's the other thing. Would you like to go outside? I'm talking to my dog, sorry. She just came running up the stairs. It's been pouring rain all morning. Okay, so, wondering, does this happen to any of you? Have you noticed this in your lives? What do you think it means? I'm curious because it's so prevalent in my life, and I'm curious how other people feel. I feel about that. My dog does it. Um, so I had, I've been having a lot of dreams about dandelions and I just went to this compassionate doula training and we did this guided meditation. We were supposed to meet our spirit animal or power animal. And I've done these meditations before and I've, lo- I've gotten lots of different animals, but in this particular situation, I got, I didn't get anything. I turned into a dandelion. And I like I like became this I was like this nucleus of the dandelion and I became all the seeds and I floated around together and I had remembered sorry I'm getting my dog food. I know like shouldn't be doing things while you're podcasting, but if I don't get her food, she will bark some more and you don't want that. So I had this whole meditation experience and in it we're being guided by a shaman it was such a cool experience and she is asking like asking us to ask questions to our spirit animal and one of the one of the things was like ask uh 
for, oh my God, advice or, or like, I forget, but the message I got, I don't remember what the question was. You don't really care. The message I got was, you can grow even in the hardest of circumstances. And like in the meditation, I was flashed to this, like me being at a turf field with my daughter. We were, uh, she was playing flag football and she was like, my, my youngest daughter was like, look, mommy, I don't, why is there a dandelion? There was a dandelion growing through the turf. And then that was flashed to this, my our driveway with the dandelion and, all these dandelion situations where like they grow and it's like not ideal circumstances. And I'm in this journey, this compassionate doula course where I'm learning about taking care of people who are at end of life. Okay. That was like a big ramble, but I'm going to take it back to the orbit thing. So the dandelion, I'm going to use, this is my opinion. This is my thought process. This is like what's been downloaded into my brain. I am curious your opinion and what your thought is on why we kind of orbit around each other. Is it just pure coincidence? I don't believe in coincidence. I think it's all meant to be like, I think it's all divine. Like we're all kind of in this like magnetic field where we're being attracted to each other. So I'm going to use the dandelion as a analogy here. So we come from this nucleus the center of the, the dandelion, okay? And that's, like, where we feel best. That's home, okay? We get blown off the dandelion, and all these seeds are floating around. And the seeds, they represent us, okay? They are always kind of trying to find their way back together. And they they either, like, travel together, like the wind picks up, and they travel together, and they keep running into each other. Or they keep like trying to like catch up with the other one. So it's like the time, like that's why certain people will be like, oh, I had that job before you or whatever. Um, the experience I had at the, the doula course I just recently took was I was waiting with one of the doulas after and we hadn't spoken the whole time. She's like, because we all partnered up with different people throughout and it just happened to be that we didn't partner with each other. And she, we were speaking outside of the, the place and she was like, Oh, I really wanted to talk to you. Cause we, it sounds like we have really similar journeys, blah, blah, blah. I worked in publishing too. And I was like, no way. She's like, it's weird. Cause everyone else here, you know, works in, in healthcare. I forgot to finish giving my dog food. See, she got me all distracted. Um, so we start talking and she says, oh, I, I actually worked in educational publishing because I was telling her what kind of books we published my last job. And I was like, oh, I worked in educational publishing before, actually, like for, for 10 years. And and then as soon as I said where I worked, I was like, oh, my God, I know it. She, she's going to say that she worked there too. And so I said the name of the publishing company and, and she goes, no way. And she, she had worked there literally the year before I worked there, knew all the same people that I knew. And, and then she moved on to work at, which is, this is also an interesting part to this. Cause I think these are all part of the dandelion scene. Seed. So she's part of the dandelion seed. I'm part of the dandelion seed. She goes to work for this other media company who two people I know, one person from college and one person from my previous job at the magazine, who I was close with, both these people. She starts to work with them. So I find this out because I asked her, I'm asking her questions. And, and then... Um, she ended up working at a college and I was like, I worked at the same college. I went to that college. Uh, she knows a lot of the same people at the college. It's, it's like one of those, oh my gosh, it's so wild. So I feel like all those people that we know or that are the same people that we know, we're all part of the same like seed and we're kind of like trying to get back to this feeling of nucleus. 
right? That feeling we felt when we were home together. We're not. And we're kind of always chasing that. I think when you meet someone, like this weekend I met this woman and we, we were like, whoa, that's so weird. Oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. And I knew like we had such a hard connection. And she knew, I feel, I feel like we both knew that this was going to be, this is going to be a friendship and like something important going forward because we're part of this nucleus. We're, we're connected and we're, there's like this, this magnet, magnetism to, to people like that. Um, so that's my whole orbit thing. Tell me if you've noticed anything about people in your orbit. Uh, I would love to hear. Or if you think I'm a, a total lunatic, share that with me too. Maybe just don't like post it as a comment on YouTube. And if you do, you know, even bad media is good media. No, it's not. Actually, I actually think that's true though. Uh, in some cases. Okay. What else do I have to talk about? Oh, I went to see a psychic medium this weekend. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, it was really cool. Um, so my mother-in-law, so my mother-in-law, well, we lost my father-in-law this year. And I'm so, th- I'm so thirsty because <laughs> I'm walking in a circle of talking. Okay, so I got my, well, my husband and I got my mother-in-law tickets to see a psychic medium because my father-in-law was, was into that stuff, but he, he was like a closet into it. He had his own abilities, and when he saw Teresa Caputo on TV, he was like, oh my god, she gets it, blah, 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 like, it was the first time he was like, oh, like, I'm not alone in this kind of thing. And so I was really hoping to get her tickets to Teresa Caputo because of that, like, connection there. He felt, like, really connected to her specifically. Um, sorry, my dog is staring at me like, you didn't give me enough food. I gotta add a treat to her food for her to eat it. I know. It's like, I just love her so much, you know? I'm gonna get back to this. So, my mother in law, we go to this thing, we get her tickets. It's like so random. This guy, I've never heard of him before. He pops up on my Facebook as we're thinking about Mother Earth birthday gifts for my mother-in-law. He pops up on Facebook and I'm like, of course, like I'm supposed to go to this guy. He looks a bit cheesy, not gonna lie. But, and all the clips I'm seeing, I'm like, kind of cheesy. Like, I don't believe much of what he's saying. And I'm like, I'm a skeptic. I believe completely in psychics and mediums. I will be the first to admit that because I have my own gifts, right? So I'm not gonna deny other people, you know, saying they have abilities, whatever. But there's something that I was like, "Eh, I'm not sure about this guy. Um, because he wasn't really showing much. He was only showing like the pieces where he says, oh, do you see lights flickering? Like, of course, like anybody can say that, you know? Anyway, so, but I was like, he's coming to town. This guy, I'm getting this ad while I'm, you know, struggling to find something for my mother-in-law. And so I book it and this weekend was when we got to go see him. So we got like the, the audience package. So it's like a hotel room and it's 150 people, which is fairly intimate. I mean, considering if you went to see Teresa Caputo, it would be like a stadium, right? So, or not, maybe not a stadium, but like a concert hall. Um, so our, our chances of getting read here were like way higher than a Teresa Caputo event, right? Stop it. Don't bark. I'm going to have to change rooms. You've had two bowls. It's okay. I'm actually going to change rooms because she, if she knows I'm in the kitchen, she just will want more food. She's like a crocodile. You know, crocodiles don't actually know when they're full. So if you put like a toddler in a lake and you just saw the crocodile eat a zebra, 
he might still eat your toddler. So don't feel like you're safe. I learned that not the hard way, but I learned that because I went to Florida and I asked a question about crocodiles. Alligators? Oh, shit. It's alligators, right? Not crocodiles. I only know they're different by their teeth, so. Anyways, this guy, Blair Robertson, this is who we went to see. So, we get there. Oh, no, no, no. Circling back. Hmm. So, I went to this compassionate doula training. And on my way home, so I'm driving. I had to go straight from the training to my mother-in-law's house to pick her up. It was just like the timing of it. And so the whole drive, I'm talking to my father-in-law in the car saying, we're going to see this medium tonight. I would love it if you came through. Like, please, like, she could really use some, like, positive messages because she tends to, like, stick in her negativity. And it's, like, it's just because she hasn't had support her whole life. So I understand where it's coming from. I just want her to move forward. So I was explaining this to my father-in-law. And I was saying all this stuff. And I said, like, she she knows she wants to go on vacation, but she's holding on to guilt and she feels bad and like tell her it's okay. Like tell her to go enjoy life, please. Um, I know that's what you want for her, all this stuff. Cause I know it, but it can't come from me. I've said it to her. She, she, it has to come from her or from him, you know? Um, and I don't think she has it in her to just like, be like, Oh, I'm not gonna feel guilty anymore. You know, so we go to see this medium and she says, I, I stop in at her place first and she's showing me the new luggage she got. She's like, you know, there's this good deal and I feel really bad getting in because I don't think I should go yet and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. I got this luggage and I really like maybe I should go on vacation. And I'm like, oh, my mom is actually looking for a partner to go to Greece with like another person because She's going with my dad and another guy um, and a friend of theirs, a widower as well. Um, I'm like, she's asking if you want to go. I'm not sure if, if it's like if you guys would mesh together. I'm not positive. But like, if you're into it, like you're my mom will call you and you can talk about it. And she's like, she, her eyes were kind of like lighting up at the idea, but like nervous a bit. And... Um, Anyway, so we go to this event, and we get there, and this guy's hilarious, very abrupt, very, like, abrasive, but, like, funny and, like, to the point. He would, like, shoot people down if they raised their hands and it wasn't for them. He'd be like, no, 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 this isn't for you. Like, And then he would zone in on people when it was for them, and then he would get really specific, and it was a really, really cool experience. And there's a lot of like lessons, like spirit lessons that come up. And I think that's part of the purpose of these things is for like those spirit messages to like resonate with all the people in the audience and all these messages I had heard before. I've had them come to me before. Um, and I think that they come to a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And the more we can get those messages of like love and hope and all this stuff out there, the more we can like raise the, the vibration of the universe. So I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. So we're we're watching this thing and we both said, like, even if we don't get a reading tonight, like it's all it's all good. Like it's so nice to hear that, you know, other people are connected to their loved ones, blah blah blah. Um so the guy, the way he does it, uh, he's saying a bunch of like words. He's like, you know, I, I have a grandfather figure, he's from the military, he had an amputation at the calf. A pacemaker like he's naming all this stuff and he doesn't even like look up until he's like said a lot of stuff he's kind of like pacing kind of like I'm doing like right now <laughs> he's he's pacing and, and rambling off a bunch of stuff and then he'll look up and there'll be like one or two people with their hand up like saying this resonates which is wild to me but it's always like okay so uh, the person I just named the this woman will stand up and say oh I had a grandfather, he wasn't in the military, he didn't have an amputation, but something else, like, and he'll be like, no, it's not for you, like, all of these things, <laughs> but, oh, he had a pacemaker, um, so it was like, you had to have all of them, and if you didn't connect all of them, there had to be, like, a way to make a connection, 
right? Like you have to piece it together somehow. And, and a lot of people were fishing because they really wanted to hear from their loved ones. And I completely, completely get that. But it helped, it like, it helped me feel more like what he was doing was more, I don't know, I trusted him more upon meeting him too. So, um, we're there. It's going on for well over two hours. And then he, he starts talking about how he feel, he's feeling a bit disembodied and he keeps getting the word Wedgwood. 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 And he's like, or maybe Edgewood, but I'm pretty sure it's Wedgwood. And literally, and he's like, that's all I got right now. I don't know. Like, uh, uh Wedgwood? Like what? And he's like, I've never just had one word. Like, and I'm looking around and nobody's raising a hand. And I look at Louise and I'm like, sorry, my mother-in-law, I shouldn't say her name. That's my mother-in-law. And, uh, I go, um, is that not where you live? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, do you not think you should raise your hand? She's like, well, would he say that? I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's so connected to you. It's your house. It's your house. It's where he died. Come on. Why are you raising your hand? So I raise my hand. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is for us. Not positive. Blah, blah, blah. And immediately he was like, it's for you. I like, I tell him, I'm like, he lived and died there. He spent the last 15 years without leaving, like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, hands the mic to me. I give it to Louise. And she's just like a deer and, and headlights. Like she's just like, oh my gosh. Oh. Anyways, he says so many things to validate. And, but the biggest thing for me was his spirit message to her. And that was, you know, you took care of me for 15 years and you didn't get to experience life because of that. I'm gone now and you can experience life again. And I want you to like, if you, if you go on vacation, I go on vacation with you. I get to experience life with you. And I want more than anything for you to enjoy life now because you had to suffer so long because of me. I want you to live and be free and like, don't stay in this negativity. She kept bringing up all of his ailments. She kept being like, well, it was hard. He had a brain injury, blah, blah, blah. And he kept saying he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to talk about any of that. It doesn't matter. And she doesn't want he doesn't want you to talk about it. He wants you to live life and go out and vacation. And this is like all the stuff I've been like trying to trying to tell her. I'm like, he really wanted you to like enjoy life. He really, really wanted that. But she gets stuck in this grief. And I feel like so many people do. Um, and. Anyways, I'm looking around after I'm crying. She's crying. Everyone's crying. And after the show, we had so many people come up to us saying like that message was so like profound and meaningful. And, and, you know, they had similar deaths or similar stories. And, and, uh, when I, when we went to see Blair after he said, Oh, you were the hit of the night. Like everyone was talking about you and blah, blah, blah. Um, and my mother-in-law left on a high and she's still on a high and she's, she's like a changed woman. It's like her aura went from like grayish beige to like orange and yellow. It's, it's like she completely changed the brightness level of her. She went from this dark and gloomy, like negative muddiness to this beautiful, like excited, ray of light it's 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 amazing so she's going around telling all her friends she's like talking to my mom about going to Greece she's she's like making plans she's going out there she might not even do the bereavement course that she signed up for that I thought was not a great idea because it's going to be talking more about the negativity and she's been in the negative zone for so long that she needs to get out and explore the positive world um and know that she's fully supported by her her husband so Anyways, I wanted to share that. And on that, I am curious if anybody would be interested in joining a development circle with me. I, after this experience watching Blair Robertson and how he explained how he does what he does and like his whole history is so similar 
to my experience that I know this is something I need to develop more. But like I have, I can, I do tarot, I do Reiki and I get the intuitive downloads there. But I think the mediumship part is really calling to me. And I feel that I really need people to work with and work off of. And I'm curious if anyone's out there who would be interested in developing with me, alongside me, we could do it together. And uh, look at future episodes to see if I do this, because I will announce it. Uh, my email is rofocreative at gmail.com. Email me your ideas, your thoughts. Uh, but I would like to have something like we can get together. We can have like Zoom meetings where we actually like try to work with each other and like test our own abilities, you know, like wondering if the imprints I get while I'm in the steam room at my gym of the lady across from me are real. I can figure that out if I actually talk to the person across from me. Right. So I am curious if anyone would be interested in that. I feel like it would be cool to do it with other people with aphantasia just because we know that our brains work in similar ways. So hit me up, rofocreative at gmail.com. I feel like if I get four responses, I'll start something. So that, does that sound fair? Or I guess we should have at least an even number. If I get six responses, so if you're listening to this for the first time and you're like, oh, I want to be part of this. First six are part of my development circle. And if I get more than that, it's going to become a development community. And if it's more than that, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. But I think six would be a really good start for like a, uh, a development circle where we can actually learn from each other. And then from that, I, I feel like we could work together and grow something bigger. So if you're interested at all, you're listening to this and you're like, yes, please, this resonates with me so much. And I stuck around and I listened to all your random stories today. Please email me, rofocreative at gmail.com. That is R-O-F-O creative, like C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E, at gmail.com. Please let me know. Um, what else do I have to talk about? There's two more things. Do I want to talk about this on this episode? How long am I in here? 31 minutes. Ah, sure. Uh, Eh, okay, I did a water experiment uh, real quick. I did this experiment on two cups of water like two years ago, and it just popped into my mind again. So I wanted to try something again with the water. I, if you've seen uh, What the Bleep Do We Know or What the Bleep 2, I think, I forget. There's this whole thing about water, and if you if you like send loving energy to water, the the like molecular composition of it completely changes. And if you send negative energy or say bad things, it, it like retains that. So I did this whole water experiment where I took a glass of water upstairs to my kid's room and basically cursed it out. And then I put it on the counter. And then I did the same thing with a glass of water, but I said all loving things to it. And I left the water on the counter. It was the same temperature water. Everything was the same, came from the same jug kind of thing. And sorry, the garbage people are coming by right now. You might hear something. Um, so I put, I put these two glasses of water on my counter and I just leave them overnight. I want to see if anything happens. So I go down on the next morning and the water that I said loving things to had all the dots, like the air bubbles in it. And the one without, the one that, you hear the bird? But speaking of birds, if you don't have the Merlin app, it's amazing. I love it so much. I, I listen to it. I, like, I use it every day. Um, so the water was different. But what does it mean? I have no idea. But if if love can change the way water is, like, composed hopefully in a positive way. If you watch that documentary I said before, it would show like beautiful patterns in the water with the, with the nice one, basically with the love. Um, so this popped into my mind. So I'm like, I got to do another experiment. 
this is <laughs> this happened because I was trying to clean my house, and whenever I try to clean my house, my ADHD brain goes, "Oh, remember that experiment that you tried to do? You need to do, you need to follow up with that. Like, why do why all of a sudden? I don't know. That's how my brain works. So instead of cleaning my windows, I decided to do another experiment. Sorry, my dog is going crazy over the garbage man. Um. I tried, I decided to do the same experiment, I, but I poured water into a Ziploc bag, same temperature water, same everything, same amount. I measured it out and I was like, okay, I'm going to freeze these. I'm going to say the same things, like the nice things, the mean things. I'm going to freeze them and see if there's a difference because when you freeze stuff, you can actually see like the markings that I was like, uh, I'm going to add some food coloring to this because I feel like um, seeing it in color might help. OK, so what I did was I shook up a green, which I'll talk more about this. I shook up a green and I added three things of food coloring to both. Um, this was before I did the love, like I said anything. So and I'm like shaking it and shaking it. And. So I go upstairs to my room and I and I say all these mean things and I say all these loving things to the things and I'm like completely separate. So they both have their own like energetic whatever. And I place it in the freezer flat. So they're they're laying down so you can see them. Like if you look at both. So I let them freeze overnight and I go to look at them in the morning. And I can't really see the patterns. The actual color was actually distracting. I might do it again without color. And I might do it again with a primary color because the weird thing that happened, I did shake the food coloring, so it should have been mixed pretty well. The one that I said loving things to was blue. Oh, fuck, I don't remember which one was which. The one I said loving things to was was blue and the other one was green. Like it was the, they were two different colors. And I'm like, OK, well, green is made up of yellow and blue. so. Perhaps the food coloring, the drops that came into the one were less yellow than blue. I mean, I don't know. That's the only way I can explain it. But the colors were drastically different. So I'm going to try the experiment again. And again. Um, what does it prove? Tell me what it proves. But I don't. It proves that that the like love does change things. And I don't know. Is blue better than green? I know that love makes me feel better than hate, right? And we are made up of 80% of water. So if it's truly affecting the way our water is like composed, we should really like focus on that love and like spreading that loving energy around so that other people's, you know, water energy is better. That's, that's, that's the spiritual thing that I take from that. And I feel like that's a, that's a, a good good way to look at it, right? Um, but scientifically, like what what is happening? What is happening? Tell me, explain it to me, and explain why it matters. You don't have to do this. Like you, I'm not your teacher. You don't have to do anything. But think about it. How about you think about this? Like sit on it. Why would it change? And maybe do an experiment with yourself. Take your own glass of water. Make sure it's the same temperature. Go somewhere. Talk to it. It's an experiment that just doesn't take any time. Um, it feels weird to yell at a glass of water, but, you know, it also, you know, get some rage out. Get your rage on. Get some rage out. Talk to the water. OK, the last thing I wanted to say was I recently read a book. Ooh, I just got ringing in my ears. I just read a book and it's like a New York Times bestseller, so you probably already know about it. But ADHD is awesome by the Holdersons. If you don't follow them on Instagram, they're hilarious or TikTok or whatever. I don't know what you follow, what you use, but. They're funny and I, I, Penn Holder, they both of them, like him and Penn, the, the couple, they have such good vibes. I'm a vibe person and they just like emanate this great vibe. It's awesome. So they wrote a book together and I loved it because I have ADHD and I have a husband who's like very, um, put together. <laughs> like neurotypical, but also not neurotypical. Like he's so put together that it's like, um, he's so structured and I'm like, blah. so 
this book is written by Kim and Penn and Kim doesn't have ADHD. And so she's she's navigating this with him. And, and they had such practical tips on how to, like, work on a partnership together with with two people, one who has it, one who doesn't um, and how to be supported and how how you can support the caregiver and all this stuff. So not that that my husband's my caregiver. It's just that um, he has to you know, deal with it when I lock my keys in my car, which I literally just did yesterday. So he's caring for me and I'm his caregiver in a lot of ways too, right? Like we care for each other and it's not that he's wiping my butt. It's like, he's, he has to, you know, help me when I, when I lose my, my shoes kind of thing. Um, anyways, I wanted to recommend that book because I know that a lot of people on here, on here, oh, I feel like a lot of people with Avenue have ADHD. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. Tell me, tell me. But I have had several people reach out after my ADHD episode and prior to my ADHD episode where people were like, why do you talk about ADHD? You always talk about how you have ADHD. So I probably need to do more ADHD episodes because I have lots more to say on that. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap that up here because I feel that 39 minutes is the perfect podcast time. Oh, shoot. It's going to be 40 minutes. Oh, well. Okay. So check out my YouTube, check out my TikTok, Aphantasia Experiments. Send me an email if you're at all interested in having a development circle with me. We could do it weekly. We could figure it out. Um, or month. I don't know. We could figure it out together. Send me an email. Um, and look at future episodes. You know, if I, if I develop this further, I will keep you updated. I'm, I, my friend told me the other day, she said, you need to actually like promote your other stuff on your podcast. I'm like, ah, I just get up on ramble and don't say anything about anything else I do. I also offer Reiki, uh, distance Reiki on my website. So if you're interested in getting distance Reiki, it's really simple. Like all you have to do is tell me a time that you're, that you're going to be resting and I will do it on you. Uh, you, you don't even have to be like sitting there the whole time if you don't want it. Once I'm in your energy field. I just don't want you like driving or anything like that. Um, and what well, what I'll do is I'll put a voice note together with all the energetic stuff that I that I comes up during the the Reiki session. It's kind of like an intuitive. I call it Reiki, but it's like intuitive healing, intuitive interpretation of your energy kind of thing. Um, I offer that. You can get that on my website, Aphantasia Experiments. Uh, I keep saying I'm gonna add more stuff. I do tarot as well. If you're interested in a reading, oh, let me know. I have that listed on my website as well. That is it for today. I hope you continue listening and I hope you had had. I hope you had and have a wonderful day and week and life and journey. Take care.